Alright guys, what's up? Old Sentinel here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, it is another train review. And today we're going to be covering the DD40AX Centennial Locomotive, number 6900. Uh, cost me 100 bucks from Train World, so if you want to pick one of these up, just, uh, go ahead. Um, yeah, I've been waiting a long time for this. Um, pretty good locomotive so far. I did test it, make sure it works. It works pretty good. And um yeah, let's let's get let's make get on with the video or the review. So um these were built in like I think nineteen sixties, forties. Not nineteen forties, so probably like nineteen fifties or sixties, around that range. Uh most of them were retired in like nineteen seventies and eighties. Um one was re they were at one point some of them were restored for short operations. One is currently the only one that is currently running is number sixty nine thirty six. Bachman doesn't make sixty nine hundred, so I got si not sixty nine hundred because it's the one we have here. They don't make sixty nine thirty six, so I got sixty nine hundred. And um, yeah, so um, we got this version, and we're today we're gonna start doing some details on it. So um. This is sound equipped as well, so I'm gonna demo the sound a little later. And um, it's got easy mate knuckle couplers. It's got the longer version because trucks right here is truck mounted couplers. Cause since of the, how big this engine is, it has to be able to negotiate tighter radius. And since it's Bachman, they can't do everything. Um, got nice handrails as well. Uh, Union Pacific on the front, number 6900 as well, on the front as well. It's got <clears throat> operational number boards, um, cab, interior detail, I can see a little bit in there, not too much. Um, nice handrails along the side, silver trucks, um, molded in roller bearing caps, uh, an operational beacon light that actually does work, it's pretty nice. Um, I'm going to do a night operation as well. I'm going to turn my lights off and do show you the lighting as well. Um, got the dynamic brake fan, some rate, and then the radiator fans for the first engine. Got some more radiator fans as well for the second engine. And then another dynamic brake fan. An exhaust fan and exhaust fan there. The horn is mounted in the middle above the in between the first two engine fans now on um, this isn't the Bachman model so in real life there is a walkway here but since it's Bachman there's a that's the motor right there has to be like that because of how long this engine is this thing is this box the box is big all right box is the size of the GS force box that's a big box and um yeah, so that's the motor. They can't do everything. It is a split chassis, if you wanted to know, because I can see the split there. But, um, still not a bad locomotive. Um, Union Pacific on the side. The little, don't know what this piece is for, really. But, not going to question it. Um, molded in detail. Union Pacific shield right there. Um, more v vents and grills on the top. Back it has directional lighting. This light does come on when you turn the lights on. UP 6900. Some molded in stairs. Um, now I'll see through walkways, by the way, but still pretty nice. Um, I am going to be turning the sound up on this at one point. The sound is going to be louder. It's still pretty loud, but not loud enough. But I'm going to turn the sound up eventually at one point. Um, same detailing on this side. And, um, yeah, still not that much to de cover. It's, just, it's a diesel engine. Not that much. It's not like a, not like a steam locomotive. Now, if you can, I'm going to zoom in over there. Shut off. And, um, yeah, my camera just shut off. But as I was saying, there is a 10 wheel engine over there. I'm about to glue the whistle back on because apparently the, when I, when it came out, the whistle wasn't on there. And, um, yeah, so that's that. Um, yeah, I'm using the last of the battery left in this camera, in these camera batteries, so I'm going to put this on the track. We're going to test it out. Again, we're going to run it. And, um, yeah, 
go and get some new camera batteries. Probably gonna start using those rechargeable batteries now. So I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, so we're back. Um, we got the engine on the track. Um, I am gonna be double heading it with that FT that I converted to DCC. At one point, I'm thinking about getting two ES44s to run behind this, cause an FT running behind this looks a little weird. But either way, um, yeah, let's run this bad boy. Haven't really broken it in yet. That's just startup. I'm gonna mute the moguls, but I'm gonna turn the moguls lights on so that way you can hear it. Yeah. So um, this is a pretty loud engine as well. It's got in the fuel tank. There's two speakers. So if you want to know where the speakers are, there you go. You go move it forward a little bit. Oh wait, I have them on the wrong thing. All right, so there we go. All right, so now what we're gonna do? We're gonna play the sounds. Um, put in reverse by mistake. All right, so. F1 would be the, the bell. F2 will be the long horn. F3 will be the short horn. F4 apparently when I tested it didn't do anything so that doesn't do anything. Um, F5 is the beacon light on top there it is it's really nice though the beacon light it's pretty good um i'm gonna leave that on f6 is the number boards <clears throat> and like a lot of youtubers have said i'm gonna try to get a front angle yeah in this case on my version the right one is more lit than the left a lot of people are saying one side was more lit than the other but on my version it's the right side lit this time um Number seven, F seven would dim it if I had the lights on, but yeah, I don't, so doesn't do anything. And here's the here's the headlight. Here's the dimming now. That's what it looks like when it's bright. This is what it looks like when it's dim. I normally keep it on bright because that's what trains normally keep it on. But um, yeah, that's the sound. The sound's pretty good though. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty. It's really nice. This is my first diesel that has sound. This ain't my first diesel engine. I did have two. This is my first one. I did have an FC75, but ever since I told the story of how a train car disconnected and wrote, it had a lot of metal in it, so disconnected and just cracked the shell in half. So, yeah. I'm still on the hunt for a sh after an FC70 shell. So, if not, then I'll try to order one for Bachman and see if it works. It should same frame but different shell but um yeah I'm gonna run this thing and yeah I hope you guys enjoy
So, apparently, just because, <clears throat> even though without, even though with the uh, opening of the plow that would be at the front, yeah, this thing does not handle 18 inch radius well. <clears throat> so, the minimum radius is 22, don't, don't run us on 18, because you will have derailments. Because as you just saw, just this, the rear axle came off. It can, it's like six wheel diesel, like 12 wheel diesels, they will handle it. 16 wheel, uh-uh. This will handle 18. But, um, <clears throat> 22 is perfect. Like, it can go through, it's just kind of difficult. I'll move this car, let me see. I'll try it again, but you never know, it might just be the reversing. Turn the bell off. I don't know, this is my first time running it today because I just got it. And the power cut off. Okay, that's nice. Alright, there we go. <clears throat> but, um, yeah. Still a nice engine, though. I'm not gonna lie. I waited way too long to get this thing. And it's finally here. I finally have it. Let's see. We'll see again. Nope. Nope, it came off again. Alright. So yeah, 22 is the minimum radius for this. Because <clears throat> that ain't really a sharp... These aren't really some sharp... These aren't even a sharp of a corner. Really, if you think about it. Oh, the power can't cut off again. That's fine, though. But, um... <clears throat> my thoughts on this... It's worth it if you're for the money. It is loud, though. I'm not going to lie. That's the only thing about it. It is loud. <laughs> like, if, I'm at, if I floor this thing into max torque and high speed, yeah, you can't barely, you can barely hear the even hear the horn. But I'm going to put it on mute. All right, yeah. Um, quiet. Um, I'll take the FT off to test its quietness. Because, um... This thing is loud with the with the sound on. I haven't tested the quiet motors. Quiet motor. Bachman normally has quiet motors for DCC equipped engines. So let's test that. <clears throat> mm, not the quietest, but it's pretty good. Like, I'll be quiet so you can hear it. Yeah, it's not bad. Not the worst thing, but it's pretty decent. All you really hear is just a re is the gears turning in the trucks. That's the all I've done. The only noise I can hear it because I did a I did do a vibration test. Most of the gear noise is not really from the motor. It's mostly from the trucks because of how big the trucks are. But um, <clears throat> yeah, because eight wheels here and then eight wheels there. This is a sixteen wheel engine. This is basically a diesel version of a big boy. Except it's not a turbine. This is a basically non-turbine version of a big boy. But, um, yeah. Nice engine, though. Alright, so it is the end of the video. Now, what are my thoughts? Basically, my thoughts are, and my... <clears throat> so, the pros and the cons. The pro is, if you're really just starting off to the model railroad and you got a small little layout, and if you want to run this thing... You can buy this. This is only a hundred dollars. And from where I live, I live in Georgia, and the store I bought this from is in Brooklyn, New York. Um, it cost me a hundred and fifteen dollars. Stock without shipping. If you just go pick it up, and if you do live in New York, then it is one hundred bucks, maybe a hundred and two plus tax. But um, shipping, it's not really that expensive. I paid one fifteen for this thing. That's pretty cheap. And if you see the steam engine that is next to me, yeah, that that that's a used engine, by the way. Still, still holding up though. Um, <clears throat> for some reason though, um, one thing, I, one negative I do have is that even though this thing does require 22 inch radius curves to run, still you can't even run this on 18. I still don't see the point of them opening the plow. Like right here, I still don't see the point of them opening that. Should have just kept it closed, but 
not gonna complain. I paid a hundred bucks for this thing, and I've been waiting for it, and I love this engine. Plus, um, yeah, that's probably one of my favorite diesel engines of all time, anyway. Away from the SD40 and the turbine. It's probably my second favorite. <clears throat> but, um, uh, yeah. Um, one thing, I, what, only negative, I, and away from the plow, the other negative is the motor, but I'm not really going to complain too much about that, because it's Bakken, they can't do everything, man. That's pretty hard to do. I have to learn how to do two Dakotas for that, I'm pretty sure, from what I heard. But, um, yeah. Um, off topic here, but, um, if you see this, this 2-10-2R-1, this is a nice engine. The only bad thing I had don't, only, there's two things I don't like about it. Reason, number one is the what's it called, um, how is it discontinued now, so I can't buy the gears I need for it, which is $8. Great job, Bachman. Um, anyway, another thing, another problem with this engine is, is that it is grinding really bad on its gears. I think it just might need some lubrication. But, um, probably that, but I'm going to test lubrication out if it, it's not that. I'm going to have to figure out some type of way to rebuild the drivetrain, or the release the drive gear. Because, um, in the middle wheel, when I did the review, I told you guys the drive gear is the middle wheel, where the centric crank connects to the main rod and to the connecting rods on the, on the drive wheels. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's about it. But anyway, I enjoyed this DD40. Um, it'll be nice running it with the, te with this R-1 when I get a sound decoder for it. Still don't have that because I legit just spent a bunch of money on this engine and I love it already. It impressed me really quickly. But, um, yeah, this is, um, pretty nice. I'm enjoying it. I would say buy it. It's a buy for me. It's on the buy list along with the Mogul and the Consolidation from Bachman. Bachman has made a couple of good models. Every model I have in my fleet away from the GS4. That GS4, good God, that is a piece of work right there. <clears throat> um, yeah, every model in my inventory is a buy. Is a must buy. Because um, the R-1 was a buy. Um, even though away from his drivetrain, but it's still a buy. Um... That thing pulls 47 cars on flat ground now. One problem I did run into it, it's probably just because of, like I said, it needs lubrication. That's probably why I couldn't pull it. Um, I had this layout on a hill at one point, and the R-1 was struggling really hard, grinding way more than normal. And, yeah, it could not pull the train up the hill. Now, that's strange for this engine. This is a 10-wheeler. And my consolidation, which is a 280, it needs new drive wheels, but away from that, away from that, that's like, I don't even know when Bachman's going to make the part. They said they were going to produce it. The engine's not discontinued. They just didn't make the part yet. But, um, yeah, um, that engine never had a, had a strength issue. That thing pulled whatever I gave it. This whole train right here had the same stuff when the drivetrain for that engine broke. Because, apparently... Because of the crappy decoder that's in both the R-1 and the Consolidation, those both decoders broke my drivetrain. <clears throat> Mostly on the Consolidation's decoder. That co decoder broke my drivetrain, so that, and then I don't have any lubricants, which I do need for this R-1 to work, and which I'm probably going to need for this Centennial, this Centennial locomotive, because of, um... The flywheel and those, oh god, just because of how big this thing is. This thing is a monster. But, um, yeah, I'm going to need some lubricant, which is like, probably $40 or $20. I really don't know at this point. I just know I need lubricant so this thing does not stop working. But, um, yeah. But away from that, this is a definite, definite buy on this model. So, Swing by Train, the world's website. And buy this engine. They have some pretty cheap engines on there as well. That's where I got my mogul and my consolidation from. Now the consolidation, the version I have, <clears throat> is the old generation version. 
and, but it does cost $90. It doesn't have sound, but it does have de that crappy DCC decoder in it. But, um, yeah. It doesn't have sound, but it is $90, and it comes with a decoder, at least. Some form of DCC. But, and that thing pulls whatever you give it. This train right here, no, it can pull this thing up a hill unassisted. No problems needed. I don't really double hit it with anything because I don't really have anything to double hit it with other than R-1, which I can, I can't, because, the... look, this thing won't even move without me having to go, and what's it called, I don't know if I'm in a frame, but, yeah, this thing won't even move. Yeah, it sounds just like that when I turn the power on for it. it sounds just like that because it needs lubrication to turn that wheel. <clears throat> Legit, this, that engine has its own little gearbox connected to a flywheel, to a worm gear. That worm gear would turn that gear axle, which would turn the, gear, the second gear inside the gearbox, to turn the drive wheel. And that gear, that gear is kind of stuck. Both those gears are stuck, so you kind of can't really do that. Those gears are jammed, and they need lube. So I need to get that ASAP, so that way it can work. So I need heavy gear oil for all my engines. I need heavy gear oil and gear grease. And then I need conductive lube. I don't really have a problem with conductive. Um, but I'm going to get some at one point. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let y'all go on with your day. But I hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure to slap that like and subscribe button. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. I've been getting money. Where the fuck you been?